So this week we subbed in some tomatoes for pumpkins because it is spring where we live right now. And we also made up a little freebie printable for happy moments, so stick around. Hey guys, and welcome back. If this is your first time here, I am Amanda and I am a homeschool preschool mom to three-year-old and one-year-old girls. And we are currently working through Blossom and Roots Early Years One curriculum. We just wrapped up week 12 here and explored a lot of fruits that are actually vegetables. We explored a lot of vegetables that are actually fruit. See, I am an adult and this is still a super confusing concept to me, so meh. This week's nature study lesson was called Pumpkins Are a Fruit, which would have been a pretty fantastic lesson in the fall. But as I said, we're just creeping into summer here actually, and not quite in pumpkin territory yet. So we switched it up a bit and used tomatoes instead. We do eat a ton of tomatoes, especially the girls. So we just focused on kind of slowing down to actually sort of study and notice things about this veggie imposter as we prepped them and as we ate them. We talked a bit about what makes these plants fruits. And I did use the language that I found in the parent guide, comparing the fruit to a backpack. I like that. And I also compared it to a spaceship because spaceships are cool, right? But that was a good way to sort of explain how the fruit part of the plant helps the seeds get where they need to go so that they can grow into new plants someday. And we also talked about how animals can eat the fruit, go someplace and then poop it out. And the seeds can grow into a new plant in this new space. So that was obviously interesting for a three-year-old. One more thing that we did here was kind of a continuation of a lesson that we did way back when we planted tomato seeds ages ago. Uh, we stuck one whole little tomato actually into some soil and it's just kind of been chilling on our windowsill for like quite a while now. And it looked like it was kind of ready to go fend off some groundhogs in the backyards. So we also had a little planting time here too. For math and science, we just kind of explored tomatoes. I didn't do the bowl of water thing. I didn't give her a, a magnifying glass and I will. It just wasn't handy, so we didn't do it. We just, again, like I said, like we just kind of focused on the fruit and what it looks like. And we used a lot of descriptive language to talk about how parts of the fruit smell, how they feel. We are going to use those other things though. Like I do want to give her a magnifying glass to like kind of check it out. I just don't know where it is right now. Um, and I also do want to give her like a little bowl of water so we could do a little sink float experiment. We did do that a couple of weeks ago with fruits that actually, you know, like seem like fruits, but we should do it with these too. Uh, we also talked about other types of veggie imposters that are actually fruits. Another one that we had on hand was a cucumber. So we got one of those out and did the same sort of activity with it as we did with the tomato, just sort of noticing, wondering, talking, using that descriptive language. And then we made a salad. Boom. I tried something different for our picture study this week to try to sort of avoid the recreation that often happens when she sees a picture first. So we just went right into the free painting activity with red, green, and blue paint. I'm not a really big fan of primary colors, so I actually use these paints that I got from Target that are just sort of like more earth tony, I guess, than your typical standard kid paints. And this just right away turned into a messy sort of like science slash sensory experiment, experience, whatever. And she was just kind of seeing what happened when she mixed the colors together and then like straight up slathering the paints onto the paper, mushing it all together. Uh, it really wasn't much of an art project as much again like as it was like a like a sensory or science experiment so at one point like when she was in the midst of this I did bring out this week's painting on my phone uh, to show her the red poppies once again by Mary Cassatt who we learned is from Pennsylvania which is very cool she just sort of switched gears a little bit after that then she was like whoa 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 we're doing we're doing painting <laughs> to make art and she did paint a little more thoughtfully for a while after that but then she like sprung right back and I don't know it was a hot mess it took me a really long time to scrub this off of the cookie sheet that I used. But I think that's just where we are now, right? Like she's three. She's really into mixing, making messes, making things happen. But she's also really into recreating things that she sees and sort of learning about the things that she sees through her own experiences and making them. And neither of those things are exactly what I was going for here, but both of those things are 100% cool with me.
In music, we had one more week with Florence Price. And honestly, I don't even know what I would use for B-roll here. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it because that's kind of what this week in music was for us. It was just more of a conversation uh, that we had as we listened to music and we talked about how different singers sort of have different titles depending on how high or how low their voices are. And I, I did kind of like also try to use like body language, use my hands to sort of provide a visual for that too. So she could do that with me, you know, like if voices are up here or down here. And I also did that with my voice, which made her laugh. And I think that that is kind of clutch. Things like that, like making a kid laugh, being silly, uh, will make it more memorable. It will help them form a good connection, you know? So making sock puppets and kindness and connectivity might have been the highlight of our week. This was really fun and it left us with some cool new friends named Charlie the Earthworm and Mrs. Piggy. We used a pair of pink fuzzy socks and then I also brought out some like wool felt, some buttons, leather. I thought the leather might be cool, but we didn't end up actually using it. We used a hot glue gun to stick everything on there and Lucy really enjoyed the process of choosing all the different pieces that she wanted to use to create her puppet. She picked some buttons for eyes, earrings, and a necklace, and then we cut out some felt to make a crown. Crowns are sort of like a play staple around here these days. Um, we use the puppets here and there to play and to talk about feelings like feeling happy, feeling frustrated, feeling left out, feeling worried. All of these came up as we played with these later on. And I think that's mostly because I really frame this as that sort of project. Like I labeled these puppets in that way. We weren't just making any puppets, we were making feelings puppets. Our read together for this week was called Layla's Happiness, and we found a nice little read aloud for this on YouTube, of course. We actually watched this one together on the couch in the living room, like on the TV, and that was a really nice experience to just sort of sit together. Uh, it was me and Lucy and Hazel all snuggled on the couch, and we had it on that big TV, you know, so everyone could really sit there together and focus on that as we snuggled. And we talked about all the things then that Layla sees as happiness and things that make us happy. We sort of like compared and contrasted those and then we created a list of happy moments. And for our list, like I said, I actually created this little printable for this that we filled out together. And I just thought of a bunch of things that make me feel happy and sort of took over one side of that printable. And I put the things that make me happy there just to get the ball rolling. And then she did the other side and she thought of a few things that she wanted to draw on the side of her list. So her three happy moments are buying new clothes, when her sister hugs her in the morning, and when I kiss her. And I would now also like to put all three of these things on my list because they are absolutely perfect and I'm just melting over here. I do like this printable and I hope that you grab it and use it if you want to, but I also really like the idea that the parent guide suggested using a dry erase marker or a window marker on a window or a mirror. And I think that I might extend on this activity at some point, just kind of continue it and have her draw some of the things that make her happy on our back window. I think that that might have been a better way to go about this because really what kid doesn't want to draw on a window right and also she would then get to continually look at those pictures at those happy moments all the time as we do all the things that we do in the dining room So we used our little red squishy pumpkin substitutes one more time in our kitchen classroom lesson for the week to make a cucumber and tomato salad. We continued our discussion about these fruits as we cut them up together. And Lucy used her little plastic lettuce knife, which is actually still kind of sharp. And then we also mixed the mayo, vinegar, salt, and pepper to toss them in. It was a really simple recipe, but it's really yummy. Uh, she ate lots of tomatoes and cucumbers as she cut them up. Um, she probably had a full tummy by the the time we were done just prepping dinner, but she most definitely did not eat the cucumber and tomato salad. And really I could not be more fine with my kid choosing to eat plain veggies instead of ones that are covered in mayonnaise. All right, so remember to grab your free printable uh, if you would like to make a mediocre happy moments list like we did. Hey, not everybody likes to draw on their windows, right? So if that is you, be sure to go down into this grip, into the, into the description to grab that 
free printable. And also make sure you come back around next week as we do stuff. It was a good week and I hope to see you back for it. Later. <laughs> <laughs>